Hello friends, Kabita here. Today's session we are going to talk about something what actually is there but we are not very much aware about it. About the good painting and bad painting, some paintings will attach you, attract you, some sculptures, some work of art you will say you like and some will say they don't like. So there are certain kind of definitions and uh, sometimes we are not aware but at the same time it plays a great role in making a good painting, a good sculpture or a good work of art. So as every kind of field of human science, you have a Shastra, a kind of thing. What is more important to understand? To understand the history at the same time understanding the aesthetical value of a work of art. So for painting, there is a Shilpa Shastra, what declares certain laws and clues to make the kind of work of art the perfect one. So there is a sloka. It is a very simple six limbs of Indian painting. So masters say that there are six limbs. If those six limbs are there in a painting or a sculpture, then the work of art is perfect. So which are these six limbs? Let me first of all say in Sanskrit, then I will come to explain them. First, Rupa Veda, Pramanani, Bhavalavanna Yojanam, Sadrisham Barnika Bhangam Iti Chitra Sadangakam. So what is that? First is Rupa Veda, the difference between form to form. If you are asked to draw a tree, you have to know the form of a tree. If you are asked to draw a mango tree, you have to know the form of the mango tree and you can really make the different forms of a mango tree and a guava tree. So sometimes to make a man you have to make it different from the donkey or monkey. So first of all this is very important to deal with Rupa Bheda. Say I draw a straight line and I draw something like this. These are two rupa. The form is different. Sometimes I make a mango. Sometimes I will make something else, maybe an orange. So these forms are different and this is called rupa veda. So when we go to identify the form, when we go to identify the painting or sculpture, it is very important for us to know the difference of forms. The second point, Pramanani. Pramanani is what? Pramanani is the kind of measurements, understanding the measurements of a form or as you see in perspective, something is near to you, it is looking big, something is distant that is looking very small. So these are the kind of measurements where it is dealt with properly then the painting or the sculpture is surviving the aesthetical test. So we talked about Pramanani. Say we are making a human being. It is important for us to know how much length he has, what kind of height he is having. According to that, we make the form where we can make he or she look balanced. So, 
So, making the measurements, knowing the measurements is called Pramanani in Shastra. Then again, near to you there is a flower. A flower is very small, but at the same time in the distance you can make a coconut tree, you can make another big tree, which may be smaller than the flower what is in the foreground. So, this is the pramanani all about, it is the measurement of the forms you are displaying together. Then bhava lavanya, what is bhava? Bhava is expression. This is very important for a work of art that you are looking at a sky. Sometimes the sky makes you happy, sometimes the light makes you sad, sometimes it is evening, sometimes it is, it is very, very powerfully energetic. So, these all things are the expressions of the color of the form. Sometimes you look at a face, a painted face or a sculpted face, you feel that it is joyful. That is the bhava, just as drama, as performance. So, just like performance, just like drama, this bhava is very important for all kind of work of art, whether it is graphics, whether it is sculpture, whether it is painting, whether it is terracotta. And this bhava actually makes you enter the painting. Then lavanyam. Lavanyam is, if I translate it into English, then it is grace or elegance. This is the life force. So, lavanyam. So, this lavanyam and bhava, these two things are sometimes psychological. But say you are trying to make a rainy season and you are making a girl whom you want to make sad or happy and you want to make the audience feel, then you have to add the bhava lavanna. So, the master is saying you have to add bhava and lavanya into your work of art. So, we have come up to this. Then bhava lavanya I can just make a face for you. For example, say I am making a face. And you can tell me whether she is happy or sad. And if I am able to make the bhava in her, then you will be able to say and you have to join with our feeling along with the work of art. So, say I make a face like this, a simple one. I hope that I have made her a little expression and you can really understand what is her mood. So, this mood is bhava and lavanya is something very much like chemistry of love, of sadness, of losing something. So, these kind of things are coming into the faculty of bhava lavanya. The last two points we are coming to, sadrisham. What is sadrisham? I think in our first episode we have already discussed about drishtantam. Sadrisham means somebody is saying that you have a voice like, like a flute or you look like a peacock or the water is like the eyes of crow. It is not that image what we are going to talk about, but we are trying to compel the audience to have a comparative judgment with many other objects. So, one form gives us the memory of many other. So, that is called the sadrisham. 
like when we are talking about Mayurakshi, peacock like eyes, somebody has face like moon. Do you think moon like face means such a round face? No, it is not like that. But the face what is giving the pleasantness, sweetness and the coolness of the moon. So, Sadrisham is something where you make one image and you make it metaphorically making another image enter there to make the audience remember about so many other drishtantam for one form. So, we make the eye People say sometimes some names are like that Minakshi. Minakshi means face or an eye like fish. Just imagine whether you can really stand an eye what is like a fish, but it is not at all about the structure, but the watery movement of the eye and the kind of what you call the glossy surface, the glossy reflection of the eye, eyeball movement and this surface quality, the textural quality of the eye is referred with the fish. So, this is the sadrisha and the last point we are coming to. The last point is Vadnika Bhangam. You have to just understand that if you look at two types of flowers, what really make you remember that these two forms are different because they have different colors. Sometimes the complexion of a human being have a little difference with another human being. Sometimes the table, the chair has the brown and I am having brown skin, but at the same time there is a little tone difference. So, these little differences of tones, hues, this is called Barnika Bhangam. So, play of colors. So, that is Barnika Bhangam. We display many things. Now, for this last point, please look at outside look at the nature, the nature will tell that every leaf, every grass, every light is having the Barnika Bhangam inside it. So, I again tell the full sloka for you, the six limbs of Indian painting. So, the six limbs are six points what you have to be remembering while you are making a work of art or you are as an audience looking at an work of art. Rupa Veda, Pramanani, Bhava Lavanya Jojanam, Sadrisham, Barnika Bhangam, Iti Chitra Sarangakam. Thank you so much.